Hi, I'm Anna Reed. I'm a Senior Program Development and Research Associate with APA, and I'm here with Melissa Zornita, the Executive Director of the Hillsborough County City County Planning Commission. Thanks for joining me, Melissa. Thank you. Um, so you had three plans recognized through the Comprehensive Plan Standards uh, Recognition Program pilot. Um, Tampa and Plant City received silver level recognition, and then Temple Terrace was our only gold level recognized plan in the pilot program. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit more. I'm really excited about that. <laughs> We're glad you're really excited about that. Um, so I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about the Imagine 2040 planning effort mm -hmm. and um, how you undertook a coordinated effort for those three plans. Um, so if you could start by providing a little bit of, of context about um, Hillsborough County and the jurisdictions within the county. Sure. Hillsborough County um, is, as you said, where Tampa, Temple Terrace, and Plant City are all located. Uh, it's a population of about 1.3 million in total for the whole county. Um, the city of Tampa makes up about 350,000 of that. Uh, Plant City is about 35,000, and Temple Terrace is our smallest jurisdiction at about 25,000. And uh, it's anticipated that the whole county will grow by 600,000 people by 2040 and need approximately 500,000 jobs. So we embarked upon an effort called Imagine 2040 to update all four of the comprehensive plans as well as the MTO's Long Range Transportation Plan at the same time. Um, with the same set of data and we utilized a coordinated outreach process to get input on scenario planning for all four local governments. And we have a huge advantage in doing that because we, the Hillsborough County City County Planning Commission, is a consolidated planning organization for all four local governments. And by state law, Florida has mandated comprehensive planning, and we have uh, a state law calling for, for our organization to do that function. So that allowed us to really um, do that more coordinated effort, take the bigger picture look at how is growth and development going to happen between now and 2040, what kind of infrastructure are we going to need, and ultimately how are we going to pay for that. Um, so through that process, you arrived at a unified vision for the jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that and how you created a vision for jurisdictions that balance sort of their individual priorities and challenges, but also a unified vision for all four of them? Yeah, this was the first time that we had had a consolidated vision map. Prior to this, each of the comprehensive plans had their own vision. And uh, so this was the first time we weaved them all together. And it really, it did take a lot of coordination with each of the local governments individually. Uh, but they, we were fortunate in the timing because coming out of the recession, there's been a lot of coordinated efforts in the region to come together on common issues. And so we sort of fit very nicely into that. And... Um, so each of the, so the elected officials kind of had that spirit of more cooperation than perhaps they'd had in the past, and that really helped. And uh, particularly the, the cities see how they each play a distinct role in the region. So Tampa is clearly the um, employment center and the hub of the, Tam the whole Tampa Bay region. Um, Plant City is more of a growing, um, used to be an agricultural community, um, a suburban uh, wanting to become, its, have its own identity, its own um, employment center. And, and Temple Terrace really is uh, uh, serving the University of South Florida, um, a community there. There's a lot of the professors live there. And um, it is uh, been a quieter bedroom community that also is trying to reach its identity. And so they each sort of saw how they could fit in and accommodate uh, their portion of the growth that we were anticipating. Um, and then you also coordinate it with the long range transportation planning process, yeah. which is a very prescribed process. Yes. Um, so if you can talk a little <laughs> bit more about how you integrated those two processes. Absolutely. So um, we started out uh, in 2013 with our first phase of Imagine 2040 outreach, which was looking at scenarios, one that would continue sort of the trend of suburban growth, 
uh, one that would focus all of our development in our already urbanized area, focusing on transit-oriented development and redevelopment, and then one that looked at uh, development along our major interstate corridors. And uh, then each of those had corresponding transportation improvements that go along with those land use scenarios. Um, ultimately, what we arrived at was sort of a hybrid mix of all three of those, and um, with a heavy focus on the bustling metro scenario that was the highest rated, which was the TOD and infill uh, focus. And so then we went through a second phase of outreach that focused on prioritizing infrastructure improvements um, and really met a lot of those prescribed for the MPO um, rules about what they needed to meet in terms of performance measures and things like that for the Long Range Transportation Plan. And um, got, got great input. Through both phases, we had over 6,000 people participate, which is by far the most we've ever had in a planning process <laughs> participate. And so that input really helped shape then what their infrastructure um, and transportation plan looked like going forward. So going back to the participation, um, obviously, as you said, 6,000 people is, is a lot. Um, what strategies did you use for engagement throughout the process? Yeah, we utilized an online platform um, to do both phases, and um, that really worked well. We did some interest. We tried a number of different techniques. Um, in the first phase, we had kiosks that we took around to different places, like the mall, we found out the mall wasn't a place where people wanted to stop and take a planning survey. But at like the tax collector where they were waiting in line was a place where they, we had a captive audience. Um, we did a lot of presentations out to different community groups. Um, in the second phase we had, a, we didn't utilize the kiosk but instead we used a text poll option and um, in addition to the web-based, and we went at, utilized that with the community group so they could, while we were doing the presentation, weigh in on the different options. Um, we also did something that I thought was pretty cool. We, in, we um, per, joined up with the local home show and um, had an exhibit there, and it just ha so happened that it coincided Labor Day weekend was the last weekend of our outreach. And so we reached a lot of people who would not normally have participated in a planning process because we were sort of at a, a unique and different venue. Um, and so obviously with the coordinated planning process, all three plans scored really well in the responsible regionalism mm -hmm. um, principle. Can you talk a little bit about how you um, balance those unique roles within the region um, in the individual comprehensive plans? Yeah, we have a lot of coordinated meetings with all four local governments together, particularly on things like how we were going to allocate the population and job projections. Because everybody wants their piece of the growth and nobody wants to say that they're, they're getting less than their fair share, so to speak. And so um, we met with all four together quite often. Um, we spent a lot of time with each of the local governments and beyond just their uh, zoning and, and administrations, the, um, also the public works, uh, parks departments, every department. Um, and that, I think, helped a lot in getting them to see that collective vision. Um, at the same time that we were doing this effort, um, there was an effort to discuss having a, a referendum for transportation, and so there was a lot of coming together on a common idea about what we wanted for growth, development, and ultimately transportation and paying for it. Um, and I guess finally, um, why did you decide to pursue the comprehensive plan standards recognition for your plan? Well, as the long-range planning organization, we're um, a, there's not a lot of opportunities uh, to showcase your comprehensive plans. That's not something that there are other entities recognizing. And you know, APA is something I've been involved in and a number of our staff have. Um, and one of them happened to be at a national planning conference and saw a presentation that you all did on this program. And it just was a natural fit for us to see how we ranked uh, in comparison to other communities nationwide 
uh, really um, adds a lot of credibility to what we do. Well, thanks so much for chatting this afternoon. Thank you.